What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Knows channel. This is a live video, so welcome everyone joining the live stream. Feel free to leave any questions in the live chat. I will answer them at the end of this video. Today's video, we're talking about what I wish I knew. I wish I knew this about building muscle and building strength when I first started my weight training career. Like you, we all go to the gym because we're inspired to get bigger, to get stronger. Maybe it's to perform at a sport or just simply to get the attention of the opposite sex, or maybe it's the same sex, whatever floats your boat. That's awesome. We're looking to build our bodies as a way of recreating who we are as individuals. Now, I grew up in the generation of action hero superstars like Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator and Conan the Barbarian, Sylvester Stallone as Rocky and Rambo. Like these muscle-bound, ripped, shredded dudes were like all the rage in those days. And boy, I bought in. I wanted to be big like Arnold and what I thought, I thought Stallone was like huge. Oh my God, if I could get as big as, as them, that's what got me excited. That's what got me motivated. That's what got me into the gym at a very early age. I just wanted to build muscle to get bigger. And I had thought that if I built muscle, then I would get stronger. I'd be as strong as the strongest strongman on the planet. And I'd be as big as the biggest big guys at the very same time. So what did I do in the early days? I set off into a three sets of 10 repetition program, which was very common in those days, kind of like a throwback to the Steve Reeves, John Grimmick full body. I was training my full body almost every day for the first year. I went to the body shop on 16th Avenue in Belmar, New Jersey, just off of Route 71. You know, I told this story when I wrote the Living Lean book back in 2011. I lied about my age. I had my own money because I was working. It was $99 for three months. I had the cash. My mom came in. She signed the waiver, whatever, and she just walked in, signed it, left, and I was there. Well, the owner ignored me, but he promised me as part of sign up, I get one free personal training session. So basically what he did, he put me on this Nautilus machine and had me go each station all the way around and train my whole body. So every day I would go in, I would train my entire body. I go around the machine three times. I do 10 repetitions of, of every single exercise. I train my full body every single day for the first six months religiously. And then I was like, wow, this maybe doesn't make a lot of sense. Let me start doing, you know, maybe it's just my upper body and then my lower body. And I started to work with different hybrid programs that came out of a lot of the muscle magazines, magazines in those days for you kids out there, you know, 30 and below magazines were these, these, these paper products you would actually buy on newsstands and in convenience stores that had a lot of the same information that you now get off of Instagram and YouTube. Well, back in my day, we'd have to get these magazines, read the magazines, read the articles, learn the workouts of our favorite actor, let's say, or mostly athlete and bodybuilder. They're the ones who dominated the magazines. So I started adopting these bodybuilder hybrid splits and also these power lifter splits. And here's what happened. As I got through my first and second year of training, I fell in with a bunch of my buddies and we were all following the programs of the big advanced weightlifters, not knowing most of these guys don't follow these programs. These programs are written by ghostwriters that work for the magazines and they just take photos of these athletes after competition. They throw the photos up, they write the byline, they put out these articles and we think that that's what they really did. So here's the problem. I was training primarily six repetitions as heavy weight as I could possibly move. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Everything was heavy. Always heavy, 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 heavy for about six repetitions. And this is in my, 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 I was 12, 13, 14 years old, just trying to move these heavy, heavy weights relative to me. These weren't heavy weights. These weren't, weren't three, four, 500 pound squats yet. I did get my way there. And as I was banging my head away against these super heavy weights relative to my ability with, you know, sub suspect form, well, I did get stronger and I did get bigger. But now that I know what I know about muscle building 
and strength building, I understand how to appropriately train based upon the specific muscle fiber type I am trying to activate. And this is the meat of the video for you guys right now. So, you know, we've talked about what we say is the rule of 25, and it is a basic rep range um, macro program that you should take a look at. Now, I'm going to make that even more distilled for you. Essentially, the six rep range, the 12 rep range, and the 24 rep range. These are the three primary rep ranges we should all be focused on training to maximize muscle fiber recruitment from three very distinct type of muscle fibers. Now, there was a thought in the early days that you train high reps to sculpt and shape your muscle, you train low reps to build your muscle. Well, that was completely false and flawed. High rep training has been shown. I have a bunch of studies, but this is a live stream and I'm not, no editing on this one. I'll post the studies later and I'll answer any of your questions, of course. But multiple studies have been shown that maximal muscle fiber recruitment can be attained at higher rep ranges if, if we pass the point of fatigue of the traditional muscle fibers being the type one fibers, the aerobic muscle fibers, if you will. You get up, you stand up, you walk around. Well, that takes certain muscle fibers to just simply move throughout the day. These are type one muscle fibers. These type one muscle fibers, well, they actually do get fatigued in time. And we need to fatigue these muscle fibers through high training loads and high intensity to fatigue these fibers to recruit new muscle fibers. And this is where the growth begins. Now, we can also maximize muscle fiber recruitment through extremely heavy weights, but in many ways, this is more of a nervous system recruitment than it is a muscle fiber recruitment. Therefore, when you train in the six rep range, you will get a little bigger. You will get a lot stronger because you get better at moving those big heavy weights, but the muscles don't get proportionately as big. When you train the, the higher rep, the 24 rep range, well, you can't move nearly as much weight. So you don't really get that much stronger, but you recruit so many more muscle fibers that have a propensity for growth, which is sacroplasmic hypertrophy, which is the ability of these fibers to actually retain greater levels of glycogen, which is the fuel substrate for these prolonged contractions, right? So the higher the rep range, as long as we're training at heavy loads relative to the rep range to the point of near failure, that means the higher rep range, we actually build a ton of muscle and get marginally strong. At the low rep range, we get extremely strong and build marginal muscle. The mid range, that 12 rep range, we actually get the best of both worlds. And you know from our videos, we say eight to 12 reps. That becomes the sweet spot. Eight to 10 is really where we wanna do most of the struggling. If you can get a six rep set, hey, that's fine but I want to turn that six rep set into an eight, 10, then a 12 rep set before we add heavier weight to the bar again. I don't want to do a six rep set, add more weight. And now all of a sudden we're struggling to get five. We're going backwards unless you are a strength athlete. And this is what I wish I knew because we would get our six reps and we would add more weight. And then we'd get four reps and be like, wow, got four reps. Look how big the plates are on the bar. I'll add a little bit more weight. Now we're getting threes and twos. Before we know it, as young kids, we're getting doubles and triple sets of four or five. And I got to tell you, I was one of the strongest guys in the gym as a teenager. I was, I was extremely strong as a teenager. I was training with all the grown men, all the competitive power lifters. They took me under their wing. I trained with many of, of the, the local lifters, the regional lifters, the top lifters and bodybuilders in this area in the, on the Jersey Shore on the East Coast because I was able to squat over 600 pounds in high school. I was a 700 plus pound squatter in my late teens. 
very rare that there's groups of guys that can do that. And I was one of those guys. So I would be like, hey, man, you know, whoever, you know, with guys like Rich Gaspari, guys like Matt Duvall, rest in peace, these, these big name bodybuilders um, that were in our area, I would train with those those guys and, and just many other monsters in the area. Um, a whole list. Nick Tregeely, of course, Mr. Mr. USA, IFBB professional. He remembers me in those days and how ungodly strong I was. I was doing good mornings with, with over 500 pounds, four repetitions witnessed by hundreds of people in my gym. So this is not just bravado. This is like I was extremely strong in those days, but I wasn't nearly as big and muscular. I never achieved that muscular look that I wanted. I never got there because I was training in the wrong rep range through my, my teenage years. And then I transitioned out. I started wrestling. That became my passion. I got into combat sports. And now I, multi I, I changed my physique. I'm not dissatisfied. And I, have, I have a ton of that really thick, dense muscle tissue on me. But so I'm going to answer your questions right here. But I wanted to part with the three rep ranges that you definitely should be training in. The six rep range, the 12 rep range, and the 24 rep range. This is a great way to cycle your training, and you can do it in a few different ways. I'm on a push-pull legs program. Right now, I'm going, going my three days of sixes, my three days of 12s, and my three days of 24s. It's incredible how my physique is changing. You'll see the reveal in May, right? I'm in the middle of my recomp right now. So I'm going to share this with you guys. I have all the photos going back to December even, even when I was in my you know off-season shape kind of enjoying life, still trading. I was, wasn't out of shape. January when I started cleaning up the slop and now I'm in the midst of my summer shredded challenge. I've documented all the training and that's what motivated this video that I wanted to share with you. Don't make the mistakes I made as a young man, as a kid. Learn from me now with almost 40 years, 37 years. I started training when I was eight years old on a little Marcy, you know, uh, weight rack in my my house that my uncle bob gave me and then i had a traditional um weight set that you fill the sand up that, that my neighbor gave to my dad and my dad gave to me so i actually had these in my house at eight and then at 12 years old is when i joined the gym so pick or choose let's say 12 years old i'm 45 right now so i got 30 plus years real time in the gym training most of those years were training with elite remember i was training as a teenager with elite power lifters, state record holders, national record holders. I mean, my buddy Joe McAuliffe, multi-time world record holder, uh, can a attest to this also. I, I love Uncle Joe. Um, but anyway, so sixes, twelves, and 24s. These are the rep ranges. Now, last piece, you have to train to near failure. We will stop and say technical failure, not total muscular failure. This means once your form breaks, stop the set so you don't get hurt. This is another lesson bonus right here. So you don't get hurt. Lord knows I've pushed the past, pushed past the point to total muscular failure. And every single time within a short period of time in that training cycle, we get hurt. Knee goes, back goes, elbow goes, neck goes, shoulder. Something goes and what happens, you got to pull back on the training. You got to take a few days off, take a few weeks off. You got to deload back cycle and then ramp back up. You've dramatically lost a lot of the momentum and progress. So it's two steps forward, two steps back. That happens a lot when you're pushing red line. Let me answer some questions right here. I appreciate you guys. I think what we're going to do is every Friday, we're going to do some live Q and A's here on the Mike Dolce Nose channel, of course, at, at 12 o'clock every Friday on the Dolce Diet channel. We do our finance Fridays. Isaac, can you make a video about the difference between a boxer's weight cut and an MMA weight cut? I absolutely can. Let me try and get a boxer on to do that with. Paul P, literally sipping pre-workout, watching this to get ready for chest day. Hell yeah, baby. Bringing me back in time when I started. LOL. I lived in Westville. Uh, West Belmar. Okay. Oh, Belmar. Uh, that's up in Long Island. Right on, man. Right on, Paul P. You know what I'm talking about. This this East Coast mentality. All of us meatheads. Rob, what's up, Rob? Good to see you, my man. I like that avatar, brother. It really pops. Uh, Paul P., it's crazy the advantage now having the video footage instead of reading a magazine. Ain't that the truth? Like, we grew up in prehistoric times. I remember riding my bike to the 7-Eleven on Highway 35 and River Road right here in Belmar. 
waiting for those muscle magazines like muscle mag international muscle media 2000 muscle and fitness um flex magazine iron man um did i say muscular development and then some of like the soft core male porn magazines i didn't even know like men's fitness and men's exercise these was like soft core porn i didn't know that it was like the dude and like his daisy dukes and like his butt cheek hanging out and like it was all like hamstring and ab training and it was all just like i didn't know i was like dude this guy's in shape like all right what's what's his diet like how's he i was i was just voracious with my appetite for knowledge in those days jesse hell yeah two for one a beast dolce f you us a bunch of motivation and refocusing when I needed it most. I'm here, brother. You know it, man. That's what we're getting. That's what we're getting. Um, Nick L, my man, Nick L. What's up, Nick? Boom. Getting it in, Nick. I appreciate you, my brother. Paul P, Westville, Belmar, New Jersey. Belmar, M-A-W-R. I'm not familiar. I know there's that Belmar, Long Island. So I'm in Belmar, B-E-L-M-A-R, on the Jersey Shore, right in the middle of New Jersey. Exit 98, right? The saying in New Jersey. What exit are you from? That's how you know where you are because in New Jersey, I think we go from exit zero or exit one, which is down in the bottom of Cape May. So the farthest southern point in Jersey is the beginning of the parkway. And then the farthest northern point, I think, is exit 162, right? 162, 166, something like that. So it's basically 160 miles. Every exit is about a mile. I live right at, at, at exit 98. So it's basically in the middle of the state, give or take. Um, but we're right on the shore. So you take, you know, Parkway to 138. 138 dumps you off into the shore. And then these are a bunch of little um, postage stamp towns. These are all little one by one mile by one mile little square towns all over the place. Um, so I know there's a West Belmar. Um, ben Frank, what's up, Ben? Doing well, man. How you doing? Good to see you, Ben. All right, guys and gals, I do want to keep this, again, quick clips, short hits, guaranteed to add value to your life. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to this channel, guys. This is, I, I want to just really serve you. I want to provide as much value, value to your life. We've blown past um, 1,000 subscribers. I think we're knocking on the door of, of 1,300 subscribers. Consider being one of the first 10,000 subscribers to this channel. You will be one of the OGs. This channel will blast through 100,000 subscribers, and we will blast through 1 million subscribers. Also, those here, we have, we're, we're going to be doing interviews on this channel. Upcoming. Let me tell you. Let me look at the calendar right now while I have you guys here. Let me tell you who we have coming on. I think you're going to be super excited about this. We have scheduled events already locked in. Dates are ready. Wes Watson. Do you guys know Wes Watson? Wes Watson of GP Penitentiary Life, right? If you don't know Wes Watson, oh, you are going to be in for it. Fucking surprise. Wes has an amazing story. He spent 10 years in federal prison. His attitude, his ethos, his work ethic is insane. We're going to have Wes on this channel. We're going to talk about his life. We're going to talk about his training, his diet, and really like his philosophy. We got the rhino coming on. We got Mr. Stan Efferding, the strongest professional bodybuilder on the planet. Stan Efferding, the author of The Vertical Diet, of course, one of my dear friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm actually looking at his bio right now. I don't think he wants me to read that for real. Um, also, uh, we have Rob Dalzo and John, John Buckley coming on, who are the creators of this right here. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of this. What is this? Did you see that? This amazing band is the buckley fire strap amazing innovative uh piece of material and actually rob dalzel is a ddc a dolce diet certified coach but he's an entrepreneur a businessman at a very high level and he's working with john buckley here who created this buckley fire strap so we're going to have them on next week um we have dr john campbell phd who will be coming on the show to talk about muscle protein synthesis muscle fiber type how you can build more muscle um, who else do we have quite a few, we got a couple, uh, I, I don't want to say names until we have confirmations. Alwyn Cosgrove will be here. Alwyn Cosgrove is like just a, a, an OG in the fitness world. Many of you have read Alwyn's articles back from the T nation days. Those of you who, who know him, 
Um, exit 1A. There you go. DDC. Boom. Hell yeah, Nick. You know. Uh, Chicago soon. That's the plan, man. Now give us a little bit more time to get this world shaken up or cleaned up. Chest am currently cutting down the fat. Do you like pre-exhausting the muscle before bench pressing? Can you speak to that? I'm mainly trying to bodybuild. I don't like bench pressing. I, I don't suggest bench pressing. A lot of injuries come from bench pressing. Yes, it, my buddy Nick Tregeli, um, Mr. USA, NPC Mr. USA, IFBB professional. He actually did it. He, he changed my whole concept on chest training a few years back during one of our interviews what he does he pre-fatigues the pec muscle through traditional really slow and controlled you can't quite see me here really slow and controlled cable movements just playing just trying to find those pecs because it's hard i have very powerful anterior deltoids i have you know my, my my neck my traps my lats they really try and own the lift it's been hard for me to activate my pecs and grow my pecs until I spoke with Nick. My chest has probably doubled in, in the, the accumulated muscle mass because of Nick's tip right here. We want to pre-exhaust the chest, but the pre-exhaustion isn't so much to make the muscle fibers fatigue, which it does. It's to create the connection with the muscles themselves by getting that, that stretch and squeeze, stretch and squeeze, stretch and squeeze, doing two or three sets of 20 to 50 repetitions. I like to do it on that seated cable press machine. What that does, it really allows me to connect with the muscle. So then when I do move to the multi-joint compound movements, which will be either a barbell or dumbbell press, I do mostly dumbbells for pecs. I do some barbell incline and I do a lot of floor presses also for the pecs. Um, and then some, there's some other machines. You, you can choose whatever feels best with your pecs. Do what feels best. Now, the bench press is historically not a great pec building exercise. It's a great anterior delt building. It's a great tricep building exercise. The pec muscle itself doesn't get worked as well with a traditional barbell bench press. Now, dumbbells at varying degrees from decline to flat to incline can work extremely well. So the, to the answer, I would say yes. You think stretch and squeeze, stretch and squeeze until you build a pump into the pecs. Not so much that they're so fatigued that you cannot handle heavy weights because heavy weights in that member six rep range, 12 rep range, 24 rep range. Those are the three rep ranges you want to be training in, but not all in the same workout. That's one thing caveat. You want to have your six rep days and your 12 rep days and your 24 rep days and i will tell you the 24 rep days are the hardest days for sure because the weight is not that much lighter than the 12 rep days it's not it's it's not that it's maybe 10 15 percent lighter it's still decently heavy so you gotta dig deep but it's not quite so heavy that you can't do one more deep breath focus stabilize one more fuck deep breath focus stabilize one more holy shit and then you got hopefully a training partner screaming at you, standing right there, making sure your form stays tight and you stay, stay safe. That's where we get down to. But anyway, uh, Ben, listen to him, Wes Watson, every day. I'm excited to the conversation with Wes. I'm excited to reconnect uh, with my man, uh, Stan Efferding, you know, just one, one of the true gems in the sport. That's all going to be hosted here on the Mike Dolce Knows channel. So those, I mean, I'm excited about that. I don't want to overspeak it. We have about five other guests that you guys are going to freak out about. Big name guests that will be on this channel now, now that we've broken free from the algorithm that we were suffering on, on, on the, our main channel. This is now becoming the main channel here simply because we're getting more views on this channel with 1,300 subscribers than we're getting on our big channel with nearly 50,000 subscribers. That shows you how powerful the uh, the you know, the PC police have been, unfortunately. I didn't even do anything wrong, but I didn't even do anything wrong, by the way. But anyway, I digress on that. Well, guys and gals, thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys very much. Again, consider subscribing. Bang, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about this video, leave them in the comment section for the algorithm. Of course, any comment for the algorithm is helpful. Um, but also, if you have any thoughts on videos you want to see in the future, leave them in the comments below this video. I read every single comment. I try my best to respond to every single comment within the first 24 hours or so. And then I always respond later on down the road as they pop up. 
So lastly, guys, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, boom. <laughs>